Yeah, that was the uh, from the new uh, food release, uh, which is called Four Pieces from Candyland. You've been hearing it right here on WUSB. Um, playing it every week, and, uh, you know, i got to keep playing more of it then. i got to play songs again. There's only like five tunes on it. But, uh, yeah, and before that, a bunch of tunes from Firehose uh, speech, uh, featuring Ed Crawford. And we're lucky enough right now to have uh, Ed Crawford, that's right, Ed from Ohio, on the line right now. Ed, how are you? Yes, sir. I'm very well. And yourself? I'm very, very well. Thanks for joining us, taking the time to do that tonight. It is. Uh, um, sure. Listen, the, the, the new food EP is absolutely great. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it could fit right in with a tune like, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, Losers, Boozers, and Heroes from the Fire Hose days or something like that. Well, yeah, you know... Uh, uh, it's weird. Uh, a lot of the, the food stuff uh, comes directly, you know, my roots are in fire hose. Those are my roots. So, yeah, that doesn't, you know, seem unusual. But uh, <laughs> it's a very nice compliment, and thank you very much. Yeah, it's just great stuff. Great, great stuff. Um, if you don't mind, um, before we get into the food discussion... Uh, you know, it, you know, the tons of famous stories about you and Firehose. Uh, the most famous of which, of course, uh, is, uh, you know, how, how you were there uh, uh, to kind of uh, push Watt along into a band again. And uh, that's something uh, we're all thankful for, that Firehose got together. Uh, can you discuss anything a bit from that time? What, what drove you, what brought you out from uh, Ohio to uh, Pedro? Uh, well, uh, I just, I'll give you the, the Reader's Digest version <laughs> say, for the radio's sake. Um, no, I was just a huge Minuteman fan, you know, once I discovered that. And, uh, you know, didn't really have much direction in my life. I was going to school at OSU, undeclared major, and I saw the Minuteman, and I was like, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And, uh, you know, a couple, uh, six months later, D. Boone's dead. And I go to a show in town, Columbus, Ohio, Stashes, um, club that all the punk bands play that. And it was Tampa Bay and Beethoven. And I was hanging out with him after the gig. You know, we probably had a few drinks and, something else <laughs> and uh we we're just talking and i was like uh do you guys know what uh what george and mike are going to be doing and like yeah oh, we heard uh they're auditioning guitar players man you should call them up and i don't know if they were just you know stoned and drunk or bullshitting or whatever <laughs> but uh you know i just i know this thought about it a minute and I was talking to my friend the next day I was like yeah I was hanging out with camper van and I uh, asked him about minute man he said they're auditioning guitar players and one of my very best friends at the time he's like uh, dude that's all you do is sit around and play along with minute man records you can do this call them up and I was like yeah out of your mind actually did and handed me the phone next thing you know i'm talking to mike watt and uh he's like well you sound like a nice guy why don't you send me a tape because he wasn't auditioning anybody at that time <laughs> he was doing was uh basically recording a little bit with sonic youth at the time and his teacher bride to be kira mm -hmm. for a dose and uh I was like, well, I've never been in a band before, so I don't have any tapes. But I have a friend of mine who's offered me very graciously a place to stay in California, and I'll come out and I'd uh, be happy to come down and play with you. So I did. Went out there, and I started calling him, and uh, he wouldn't pick up the phone for about a week. <laughs> and... Uh, ran out of money, and I was like, okay, I'd go back, go to go back to Ohio, and uh, sure enough, he calls me right back up, he says, like, where are you? I'm like, 
North Hollywood. He's like, okay, when's your flight? Like 3 o'clock. I'll come pick you up in the morning. We'll come down and play. I'll take you to your to the airport. And, uh, yeah, so he come pick me up, and uh, we went down. We played a little bit of Minuteman, some Who, I don't know, um, <laughs> what else? You know, a uh, bunch of stuff. Uh, Red and the Black, you know. Of course, a little cult. Yeah. And um, next thing I know, he's going like, well, we're driving back. You know, he's driving me to the airport. He's like, well, realistically, move here. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you know, let's do Van. <laughs> and uh like, oh, give me two weeks. I'll pack my shit up and I'll be here. And uh, hence, fire hose began. Wow. So, so the legends are all true. That's a wonderful thing. That's a good story. Uh, so, yeah, Firehose then, you know, began to pump out this uh, fantastic material. You guys were like, uh, I don't know, the hardest working band in show business there for a few years when I saw you guys. You were playing all the time. You know, you guys were on the road all the time. Yeah. I mean, being located in Southern Cal, I mean, we could do a lot of shows up and down the coast. So we were always working, but we did at least two tours a year outside of that. You know, depending, we would always plan them according to the weather. You know, you do the southeast in the winter. You know, you do the northeast in the summer. And, you know, Midwest, uh, somewhere in between. You know, and yeah, we played a lot. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe back in those years how many times you came around even to the northeast, which is where we are here. It's It was... Uh... Yeah. Yeah, it was like all, you know, it was like, oh, it's a fire hose is coming around again. It was it was great and it was great to see you guys uh, all those times and and the cool one of the cool things was that the set your set was always changing, modifying, uh everything was uh like a like a you know, constantly evolving in the band, which was a great great thing to watch. It wasn't the same old thing every time, you know. Yeah, it was a very uh, organic process for a lack of a better word. It was just, we were hell-bent on a, some kind of mission. We weren't sure what it was. <laughs> but we were uh, punk rock, you know? We had that, uh, that ethos, that uh, work ethic, and uh, we just never strayed from it, you know? Yeah. the uh, I, I think, uh, I'm sure you've, you've been checking it out and, and listened to it, but the... Uh, the new Columbia um, anthology. I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, the Low Flows anthology. Yeah, I was uh, very pleasantly surprised because we had virtually nothing to do with it whatsoever, except for like I think what told them what the the name of the record should be. <laughs> Other than that, uh, we had nothing to do with it, so it was. Uh, I was very happy with it, very pleased. Yeah, it was a pleasant surprise. It's, you know, very often, you know, these things get into, quote-unquote, record company hands, and you never know what comes out. But the, the selection of live stuff on it, it's just a great thing. We're actually, after we speak uh, today, we're giving away a uh, copy of Low Flows in addition to a copy of the Food uh, EP. But oh. it's just a great, uh, it just flows beautifully. And uh, I can't believe you guys had nothing to do with the sequencing because somebody at Columbia actually knows what they're doing, apparently. Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> There's a fan out there somewhere. Uh, Columbia. <laughs> apparently, Columbia's got some little satellite labels. Uh, Columbia Legacy, this came out on. Uh, I guess they're trying to release some of their older stuff, which is very fine stuff, I might add. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, a very pleasant surprise and uh, just happened to, you know, Coincidentally, seriously, because no one planned this out that I know of, um, with our reunion tour on the West Coast, doing the Coachella shows and whatnot. So it was, you know, serendipity steps in when it likes to. 
and uh, it certainly did. Yeah, which is also another just an amazing thing with you guys is that uh, I understand you were you were uh, talking to Watt, uh, you know, a, a year and a half ago or something like that, right, or two years ago about a. Potential- yeah, we talked about it. There was an offer on the table um, uh, before this for Coachella last year, not this year, but last year, and uh, you know. He was like, well, you know, I got this big in the Stooges. He's on basically retainer. Right. And uh, But he wanted to do it, and he uh, carved out some time to do it. And bless his heart for doing it because he was... So now, so now the so now the big question here, of course, and you know the question is that are you guys going to continue this at some point for an extended period? Well, we've all talked about it. I mean... The West Coast went so well that we were like, you know, we should. Do. We never broke up. Actually, we just stopped playing. Right. So uh, there was no reason not to keep doing it, and it just felt so well. Actually, a lot better, you know, than it did. You know, when we kind of just threw in the towel after seven years, because I mean, it was just too intense to do that kind of touring that often. You just had to take a break or... And Watt needed to do his solo stuff, you know? So everything worked out exactly, I think, as it should have. But yeah, we're going to do some East Coast shows for sure. We've agreed on it in principle. It's not a question of if, just when. Okay, that'll be very exciting when you when you hit uh, the Northeast here because we will... Uh be packing it out, and it should be a great, great uh, show as as everything is from it, from you guys. Launch was just, I mean, having been out of you know fire hose for what eighteen years. Right. Response was just genuinely like you know we never sold a lot of records. We just had a, a small sort of a hardcore fan base. And, uh, you know, um, these people came to the gig and, like, people half, you know, half my age. They weren't even born right. <laughs> for doing this. We did four shows with M. Ward, and uh, even those cats got into us. And I was talking with Matt, you know, he was like, dude, I grew up on you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something we're looking forward to. I'm very happy. I'm sure you were, uh, you know... Uh, I know you guys are all pros. You've been playing for a very long time, but there's nothing like, I'm sure, that exhilaration of getting back in the room together and, and feeling something work, right? It was, uh, yeah, fairly amazing. I mean, you know, we planned, to, we had uh, two weeks uh, in California to do with with two Coachella dates, which paid pretty well, by the way. <laughs> uh yeah, and we hadn't played in 18 years, and, you know, we got together, I showed up out in Pedro, and, I mean, the minute we hit the downbeat, I knew, yeah, we got this. You know, it took about a week to work out the buds, you know, get the rust off, get mm-hmm. the barnacles off the... But uh, other than that, man, it just, it was just very beautiful in a lot of ways. I mean, I haven't had a better time. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, now, of course, you've also been, you know, uh, working with a whole bunch of other people, including uh, your own outfit there, Grand National, and um, your own uh, trio. But now now you've got this uh, other trio going, this uh, food thing, and uh, it's pretty cool. It sounds great, Ed. Oh, Thanks. Yeah, you want to talk about how that got to how you got together with Eric and and uh, and Mike? Yeah, um, I had been when I moved to Pittsburgh um, just like four years ago. You know, I'm looking around for a van. You know, looking for heavy cats. You know, and uh, my local watering hole, which is literally a block down from my house, <laughs> uh, the bar manager. He's like heard me talk and he and for a drummer like yeah my brother plays drums 
I was like, yeah, is he any good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's good. I did, you know, asked around. They're like, holy crap, you get Mike Quinlan? You know? <laughs> so I was like, and then, of course, I played with him, and I was like, holy, holy crap. Because <laughs> you know? drummers are the hardest thing to find, really. I mean, you know, he's not George Hurley. He doesn't need to be. But George Hurley's George Hurley, you know? I play with George Hurley. I don't want to play with George Hurley wannabe or anything like that. It just needed to be something different. And it became very uh, evident that we... He's, first of all, a sweetheart of a guy, which is very important. And uh, and I gave up the acoustic thing because it just wasn't a band, you know? It wasn't working. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, again, from the same watering hole, I'm seeing this guy down the bar, kind of a regular, you know. <laughs> I'm like, who's this cat? I kind of recognize. I was like, oh, that's E.V., Eric Vermillion. I was like, well, what's his story? I was like, oh, yeah, he used to be in a punk rock band. So I kind of slid down, started talking to him. Turns out, he and I had the same A and R guy from Columbia. He was in Gumball, right? In Firehose, they we both got hired from you know minor labels at the same time. He was our A and R dude, and uh, Eric was just like, you know, what you doing? I'm like, uh, I'm looking for a band. I got a killer drummer. You're interested. I was like, I, I maybe. <laughs> and I was like, well, I got a great name for the band. He was like, all right, what? I said, food. <laughs> and he kind of gave me one of those slow, slow turn, quarter turn, with a grin on his face. Like, that's a great name. I was like, yeah. And here's the thing. We call it food. But it's an acronym for far out old dudes because we're all in our late 40s, early 50s. Mm-hmm. And I think that alone drew him in. But I knew him to be a fine bass player, and I have not been disappointed. I mean, the guy, yeah, he's the real deal. You know, I'm a lucky, lucky dude. Period. Yeah, and the sound that you guys uh, got on the record, it's just so... Uh, once again, you mentioned organic earlier. It's a very organic sound. You guys uh, just play very, very comfortably together. The tone, you know, the way it's mixed, everything else is just comfortable like you're in the room. It's it's a great, great sound. That's got a lot to do with actually where we have recorded it. Um, down in Cincinnati... Amazing studio, uh, Mike, Mike Montgomery from uh, Candyland. Uh, he happened to be a Fire Rose fan, and I got hooked up with him through another band from Cincinnati who happened to be coming through uh, here, Polish Hill. And we just started talking, and he's like, no, dude, you can come out and record anytime basically for free, and he wasn't kidding. So we went down, we booked a gig, we figured, let's go down, just do a vinyl single, you know, a vinyl 45, two sides, play a gig, and, you know, see what happens. But the experience was just so, I mean, pleasant. I mean, we got through two tunes in half a day. Mm. Got through four... You know, and then went play the gig, come back, did a little bit of uh, overdubs, and uh, I mean, nicer people you will not find. And this is so punk rock, right. but it's all about, you that's, know. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. And it's you know, it very often gets a uh, a different name than that. But uh, yeah, that that's exactly what punk is all about. It's it's about getting the job done and getting it done. Uh, yeah. All these cats been doing this long as I have. 
Yeah. They're believers, true believers, you know. We don't we don't know what else to do. <laughs> <laughs> so how can how can people uh well first of all, is there gonna be more uh, more food on our plate as they say nudge nudge? Yeah. Uh we got a f- we got a full length ready to go. Uh, we gotta, we're gonna work the uh, tour end of this. We all got day jobs, unfortunately, at the moment. But we're playing pretty much every weekend, either in or out of town. And uh, but no, there are solid plans for the full length, you know, full length LP. And uh, yeah, we couldn't be. Uh, couldn't be happier with uh, the road before us. <laughs> That's fantastic. And and right now, I believe the uh, the uh, EP that you guys have out is yep. available both as a digital download. It's available on vinyl too, right? Vinyl, digital download, and uh, you can get a CD. But there's only three songs on it. Got it. So it's it's really the vinyl or the digital download you want. And, you know, for my money, it's always the vinyl. But uh, that's just how I am. Um, Give me both, brother. <laughs> that's right. Uh, where where can uh, – I, I usually we want to send somebody right to a website to buy direct if they're interested in picking this thing up. And uh, where, where can they uh, find it? Because food, you know, if they just search food, they're in a little trouble, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you – if you want to search food, you want to go through, I mean, Reverb Nation and then Slash or Dot whatever, then food. Right. And they can also search, I think, Food the Rock Band, which will also get them. Uh, rock to Band, locations. exactly. Yeah. Um, other than that, the easiest way is just to go to Freight True Records, P H R A T. R-Y, Freytree Records, mm-hmm. out of Cincinnati. And uh, they have a website as well. And uh, these are the cats who made food possible. And that's that's a beautiful thing, and we're all very happy that they have done this. And uh, when do you think uh, we might see some uh, New York area gigs? Any Anything in the future, or are you going to wait till the full length comes out? Uh, again, we're just going to do some weekenders, promoting the EP. Um, Eric, the bass player, just got married, so he's going to be oh. out of town for a couple of weeks on his honeymoon. That's a good excuse. We're pretty much booked up every weekend. And, uh, yeah, and it's, we've already talked with uh, Jerry from Braytree, and uh, as soon as we can get back down there to record the full length, we will. Fantastic. You know, we have day jobs, you know, so. <laughs> sure. Or be a weekend or maybe two. Well, uh, Ed Crawford, uh, Ed from Ohio, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you today. And, uh, from, Likewise, my friend. And, uh, you know, obviously, you know, Firehose work is just monumental in volume and just diversity and all this great stuff. And I'm ha- so happy that that's still continuing. And the new band food is just also outstanding. You guys should check it out. You can check out, just do a search for uh, Frey Tree. That's P H R A T R Y. Or uh, do a search for Food the Rock Band, and you'll get information on how to pick up that CD or even do the download if you would like, um, or pick up the vinyl even better. Um, Ed, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we look forward to uh, when you wind up up in the Northeast. Yeah, man. Can't wait to get back up, you know. I'm a Northeaster myself. Ed, thank you so much for your time, and we're going to rock out, I think, right now with a little fire hose and come back to a little food. 